So, uh, hi everyone. Uh, this is Austin from Met Scholars Association, and thank you, uh, thank you all for joining us for today's session about uh, job hunting through internships in Japan. So today we have actually four speakers, including myself. Uh, we have uh, Kawase Sensei from Yokohama City University, Yokohama Koku uh, Ichiritsu Daigaku, and like uh, two of her actually uh, people who have received her guidance as you know, for career counseling in um, Yokohama City University, Ape and Giorgio. And so today we will be exploring topics regarding, you know, um, how you should plan your career, internships. And uh, we have all three of the speakers here who are foreign students, myself, Ape and uh, Giorgio, have all actually gotten jobs through internships. And so this is actually one way for, for us to probably, hopefully, like, you know, give you an understanding about, you um, our experiences and hopefully that you can get some information that may help you in your experiences okay uh so yeah i just wanted to start with that once again if you have any questions put them inside the q and a not the chat q and a not the chat um function at the bottom and uh if not maybe let's just start with the with the um with the speeches and the and the lectures so uh call sensei, call sensei uh, can you check if you can turn on your uh your video and your voice yes okay, okay. so Okay, can you get Please started? Okay, uh, thank you for a nice introduction, uh, Austin. So I will change my slides. So please uh, wait a minute. Yep, we can see it. Okay, yep, can you can. see my screen? Okay. Okay, so hello everyone. Uh, once again, uh, welcome to the internship seminar for international students. Uh, in this part, uh, I'd like to talk about some important points uh, to prepare for internship in Japan uh, before guest speaker session. Okay. Okay, uh, first of all, uh, let me introduce about myself. Uh, my name is Keiko Kawase, a career counselor for international students at Yokohama City University. I usually listen to uh, international students' concern about uh, job hunting in Japan and uh, finding internship in Japan through career counsel counseling. So I truly respect uh, all of you uh, who come from uh, different cultures and who experience uh, some challenges uh, here. So I'm so happy to be here, uh, to be to be here with you, okay? Okay, uh, in my presentation, I'd like to discuss two key points uh, for international students uh, looking for an internship in Japan. The first one is understanding recruitment schedule of Japanese companies as early as possible. Okay, the second one is to expand your network in Japan. Okay. Okay, so let's get down to the business. In this part, uh, let me talk about the most important topic to for finding internship in Japan. Uh, that is recruitment schedule, uh, recruitment schedule of Japanese companies. Okay. Uh, this that shows the typical recruitment schedule of Japanese companies for international students entering in, in entering universities in April. Uh, basically, Japanese companies start recruitment, recruitment in March, more than one year before graduation. Therefore, it is necessary to do a lot of job, uh, job hunting activities during spring vacation, such as uh, uh, attending job events, uh, events and screening uh, documents, and taking interviews. Okay. Uh, however, I'd like to add uh, important information uh, that is, most Japanese university students start preparing for job hunting uh, two years before graduation. Uh, that is, summer internship. This summer internship is the first real step in the job hunting process in Japan. Uh, basically, many Jap and many companies have a, a screening process before summer internships, and they start screening from June to the beginning of July. So, if you are a third year, uh, third year undergraduate student, uh, first year master student, and second year doctor student. 
uh, who has not started uh, to apply uh, to us, uh, who has not to prepare, uh, who has not to prepare for summer internships, please uh, start working for companies and apply to them right now. Okay. Uh, and unfortunately, if you have already missed the timing to apply summer internship, I encourage you to look for the chance uh, to participate in the winter internship. Okay. Details of inter in winter internship will be available on the company website or our website or our job information website around October. So please keep checking the website okay, from now. Okay. Also, if you are now final year student, uh, you should apply for companies right now. Okay? At the same time, I strongly recommend that you look for uh, startups uh, or small and medium-sized companies. Uh, that is because uh, popular companies uh, such as large companies and foreign invested companies have already finished their recruiting. Also, keep in mind that it is desirable to receive a job offer by December of final year, considering the changes of your status of residence. Okay. Hmm. And this slide is for all September graduates. Basically, company recruitment schedule are based on, based on students who graduate, graduate in March. Therefore, September graduates need to obtain recruiting recruitment information from March graduates from time to time while balancing the research and study for graduation. Also, I recommend that you contact your university, uh, university or company as soon as possible uh, to inquire changes to your work visa. In general, Many Japanese companies only accept new graduates in April. So I recommend that uh, you gather information on visa changes as soon as possible. And at the same time, consider how you will spend your time after graduation. Mm, I think it is very important point, okay? Uh, now let's consider how international students uh, should look for internships. The key point is to expand your network, okay? Mm. Unfortunately, uh, most job information websites in Japan do not publish job information in English. Uh, that's because most Japanese companies require high-level Japanese skills. So in many cases, uh, international students who are successful in their job hunting acquire internships information from their personal network. So let's expand your network in Japan, uh, such as senpais in your laboratory, uh, Japanese friends, uh, extracurricular activities, uh, such as uh, inter, uh, international ex exchange committees, and colleagues at uh, your part-time job. Uh, if you don't have such a network now, uh, I recommend searching uh, searching for university alumni on LinkedIn, okay? Okay, uh, this is the end of my lecture. Uh, from now, please listen to stories of your senpais. Uh, actually, uh, I've supported their job hunting in Japan, so they are all wonderful senpais who are thinking positively about uh, their uh, future careers. So I sh I'm sure that uh, their experience will be helpful for your job hunting in Japan before preparation. Okay, so of course, uh, don't hesitate to contact me. Uh, contact me uh, through LinkedIn page. So if you have any troubles, if, uh, if you have any concerns about job hunting in Japan or looking for an internship in Japan. Okay, uh, thank you. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much, Kosi Sensei. Um, so uh, we will. That was mainly about like you know like the overall job hunting schedule in Japan. Uh, my own uh, my own uh, topic will be covering a bit more about what you can expect in the summer and in winter internships. So the thing is, uh, please hold on for that. Um, next up, we have Ape. Um, Ape, are, are you available right now?
Um, Ape, um, are, are you available? Yes, I'm okay. available. Um, do you think you could like uh, turn on your uh, your camera and like please show us your slides? Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, I cannot turn on the camera. Oh, okay. No, because you came in a bit late. Uh, don't, uh, give me a second. Um, I'm going to make you co-host. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, you should be able to do so now. Okay. Okay, uh, you're good. We can see you. Yeah. Well, let me share my screen. Can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Yeah. So, okay. hello. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Abe. Uh, let me make this uh, screen view. So hello everyone, um, thank you so much for joining and first of all, a big thank you to uh, Kabase Sensei for providing me this opportunity to share my experience and how I can help other foreign students or any students to get their internship or a job after their graduation. So uh, let's start without uh, uh, wasting any time. So let me explain a little bit, little bit about uh, me. So my name is Abe. Um, uh, in Katakana, you can call me Abe Nwari. Uh, last year, I did my bachelor's in, from mechanical engineering from India in 2016 and did my uh, diploma course from Indian Institute of Technology in 2018. And about my work experience, currently I'm working in Scientist Page Inc. in Japan as a strategic partnership manager. Um, before coming to my full-time job, I was also working as a research assistant uh, under my professor, uh, Professor Solim Chang. And before coming to Japan, I was working full-time as a management consultant in Indian company. Um, like I worked for more than two years. And a little bit about my industrial uh, projects and internship. So in Japan, during my graduation, I did my internship at Honda Motors, uh, Nissan Motors Corporation, so Rikoko Limited. And in India, during my bachelor's, I did two internships, Asahi India Glass and Maruti Suzuki. So a little bit uh, surprising. All these companies are Japanese. That's why I am very much interested to come to Japan for a master's because in my bachelor's, I was very much interested in Japan. So my current goal is to be fluent in Japanese language. And for that, I'm learning Japanese and trying to uh, improve myself. And my hobby is uh, reading, doing exercise, and my interest is knowing about world affairs. So let's move on to the fact and sharing my experience. So I will explain my own personal experience. Uh, in combination of internship and full-time job, what I have learned because in Japan, internship or a job hunting is totally different from India or any Western country, Europe or US. So you need a lot of preparation and a lot of things. So I'm, I'm sure you all are about, aware about this and professor also explained the timeline of the job hunting. Uh, to add in this part, job hunting, uh, you also have a two kind of uh, opportunity to get a university recommendation to apply for a particular job or you can do by your own. So for the university recommendation, your lab have a certain uh, context from the uh, companies or organizations and certain types of jobs offers so that your lab or your university can recommend your candidature uh, uh, by themselves. And for that, you can uh, apply for that with a little bit of some preference. So job hunting in Japan basically starts from uh, 1st of March every year. And if you are in the bachelor's, you can start from the third year. If you are in a master's, you can start from first year. And if you are in PhD, you can start from your uh, second year. So yeah, you all are aware about this, but I'm not going in detail uh, about the timeline, but I will, uh, explain a little bit in detail about the key job hunting process. Don't 
differentiate between the uh, internship and the job hunting what i think the main goal for the internship is getting a full time job what i am uh, pursuing so uh, let's combine this internship and job hunting together because all these process are combined what i think so the process i have differentiated in three parts like company briefing sessions submitting entry sheets and aptitude test and interview and then offer letter company briefing session is important part it could be online or offline uh, last year it was a bad luck for me because everything was stuck due to covid and it was offline and the most worst thing was that i was stuck in india because i went to india in february for a winter vacation and there was a lockdown and for the whole year from february to october i was in india and attending doing job hunting uh, online so thanks so thank you so much to professor um, kavase she helped me a lot and give me motivation every time mm -hmm. so company briefing you should attend every kind of company briefing when starts the process for the job hunting or a internship the second step is coming to submitting entry sheet this entry sheet su submission is very important because your further step will define uh, by the your entry sheet so if you are applying to the rikunobi or a mynobi uh, website for any job uh, some company ask you to register on the rikunobi or mynobi and su submit the open entry sheet what they call open es so once you submit the open entry sheet they will select you and if you will qualify with the entry sheet they will send you the uh, uh, e e send you the email and ask you to register on their official website for the job hunting process and then the process will start with the aptitude test so key questions i faced during my job interview like explain your strength and weaknesses why do you want to work for our company why do you want to work in japan being a foreigner these questions you will face what other companies or industries are you applying this question is very much important don't hesitate to tell about the companies or the industries to whom you are applying be very honest and what ch challenges or conflicts you have faced and how you are dealt with it so this is the questions uh, you will going to uh, face uh, the second pa part like um, the trick i want to uh, mention here because i'm not very much fluent in japanese and everything was in japanese so what i did personally uh prepare myself before going to the interview or anything just make a, a page and uh, translate in japanese and try to memorize it and try to be uh, you know co comfortable with the japanese and you can use the japanese english mix, uh, mix this effort will show the company organization that yes you are doing effort and you are committed to do something uh you are not going to give up so try to use a uh, mixture of japanese and english these are the very 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 important websites during your job hunting or internship rikunabi and mynabi so i used rikunabi uh, during my whole internship and job uh, job uh, job hunting a little bit faced some technical issue with the uh, mynabi so i used uh, uh, rikunabi only Uh, you can register on the uh, rikunabi and you will see the worst thing this website is in japanese so you will so one trick what i use just use the automatic translation on the google chrome and website will translate it in the english so you can get some idea what they want to say and you can uh, go through the process so here is the journey and process i followed during my job hunting so as i mentioned during the covid i was stuck in india and that's the bad thing for me but what i did i attended all these companies briefing and uh, every event although that are in japanese but my intention is to attend the job hunting uh, process job fair or a company briefing to understand the process and see the uh, you know participation of the employer and the employees and how they behave because culture is very very much important in japan and you have to follow up everything the other uh, technique i use i created an excel sheet and, and i maintain every process every application for my job hunting 
So I just used a uh, simple Excel sheet like the serial number, company name, applied by Rikunabi. Company briefing session I have attended or not, registration I have done or not, entry sheet field or not, due date, what is the due date, what is the test date, interview date. So everything, because I had applied to almost 65 companies. And this is not a bad thing because when I talk to my colleagues or my uh, batchmates, Japanese students also applied to more than companies like 30, 40 companies. So it's not a bad thing to you are, if you are applying to so many companies. Don't miss any chance. If you are thinking, okay, this company is not beneficial for me, just attend to get the knowledge and things. It will not hamper anything. You will learn a new thing only. Some techniques I use like uh, prepare my all answers in advance in Japanese and try to learn and use with mixture of English. The result was positive because the, the, the person who is interviewing me, they can understand being a foreigner, I cannot speak much Japanese, but you have to show your effort because you are doing some effort and that should be uh, you know, uh, presented in front of the person. Participated in every company briefing and job fair, although all the events are Japanese, but I just want to understand, see the process. You have to be uh, motivated, uh, keep in mind like motivation, motivation and motivation because motivation uh, is very important during the job hunting because I personally felt uh, so many times like I cannot complete, like I want to give up. So uh, keep your motivation high. Did not to worry, some companies also offer internship and graduation for uh, like new jobs in English because I just found this company, uh, Fuso, Mitsubishi uh, Bus and Truck Fuso. It's a uh, the Japan based organization. Like uh, they offer uh, all these process in English and Japanese. So you have two choice, like if you want to go with the Japanese or English. So here you can apply for the internship or you can go for the new graduation, uh, graduate jobs. Fujitsu also offer a process uh, in Japanese or English. I completed the all the five steps during the job hunting process at Fujitsu. And during my interview, I got a chance to give the interview in Japanese or English. I, cho I chose English. During the entry sheet fill up, you can also uh, get a chance to uh, complete the process in English or Japanese. So these are the companies you can check the website and you can go ahead. Another important website, uh, Wantedly, this is best for the startup jobs and internship at the startup companies. Although this company, this website is in Japanese, uh, so you can use the automatic Google translation. But once you get the contact in the companies, they will definitely help you to be the, you know, comfortable with the Japanese and English. All these startup jobs in Japan, you can get. I got my internship uh, uh, from this Wantedly company, uh, in, in which I am doing my full-time job. Although some companies are trying to improve the, make the official language is English in Japan. Honda makes in, in English official language. Uh, this is the news last year. I got an internship in Honda because they are trying to be the, you know, uh, make the official language English. And I was the first foreigner to get a Honda internship uh, without J Japanese. So it's also a very pr a proud moment for me. I, Although this internship was very uh, uh, like uh, two days internship, but it's a proud moment for me. Rakuten already have their English official language. Don't confuse with the Rakuten and the Rakuten mobile. Rakuten mobile is totally English. Uh, they use Japanese also, but you can uh, get a job or internship uh, without having high level of uh, Japanese skills. Shishido also uh, uh, beauty product, manufacturing company, they have announced to make their official language. So these are the three big companies. Uh, they are going to make their official language uh, English. Another one, a very recent news yesterday, June 24th, uh, June 24th, uh, this Sharp, you know, this company is a big Japanese company. They manufacture phones, laptops, everything, electronic uh, products. So they are going to make English is the official language by 2020. So they are doing a lot of efforts to uh, uh, like encourage, motivate foreigners, foreign ta talents to uh, get the job in Japan or internship. This also a good website I used during my internship uh, job hunting process in Japan. 
uh, Japan Dev, you can get a large number of uh, options. Uh, in which you can uh, like for the internship or a full-time job, technical, non-technical also uh, with the help of like, they will mention, okay, this job is required this much level of English, this much level of Japanese. So it's very easy. And this website is in English. Don't worry. This website is in English. The founder, I know him. It's also a startup. He's, uh, he's I'm not recognizing the name uh, like so from where he, but I know him. Uh, so the motivation to start this uh, company for him also to help the for foreigners to get a job information in English. So this is totally English. You can just go through this website. During your job hunting, uh, the more the one more important process. This is a service decenter.co.jp you have to register on this website and upload all your mark sheets data uh, like grades online because when you are go, go through the job hunting process and at the step they will ask you to submit your online like grades and scores you cannot submit to any like uh, like submitting the file or doc file or your uh, grade uh, scorecard you have to register here uh, mention all your grades and you have to su su submit all the grades through this website only. So thank you so much, all of you. Uh, I hope I am trying to share my experience and my uh, thoughts. I hope this will helpful for all of you. Thanks so much, uh, Ape, for your uh, presentation. Uh, very like very well, um, very well put together. As well as, as well, lots of resources regarding the platforms that people can use. Uh, once again, please, um, everyone who um, there's lots of things that we're having. There's lots of information that we're giving you right now. If there's anything that you're not sure of, anything, please put them inside the Q and A so that we can look at them. We will answer all the questions together at the end of uh, the session. Uh, so next we have Giorgio. Uh, Giorgio, are you uh, available to talk? Yes, can you hear me? Yep, um, maybe I think I'm, you, may, you may want to move your mic a bit closer to your, your voice because, yeah, to your power. Uh, yeah, okay. this better, much better, much better. Okay. Ah, very well. So let me maybe increase the mic, microphone volume. So uh, could you please share my slides because I am not able to do that. Okay, um, Kawasi Sensei, uh, could you uh, assist please? Okay, so I increase the volume to the maximum. Oh, wait a minute, okay. Yeah. Uh, can oh. you see the screen? Yes, uh, thank you. So, very well. Uh, hello to everybody. My name is uh, Pintao Di Giorgio. The, everybody calls me Giorgio. I am from Italy. And uh, you know, Italy is a country in Europe famous for fashion, coffee, cheese, uh, football, and of course the mafia. By the way, I, I don't like any of those things. Uh, maybe that is why I live in Japan. Uh, I am currently employed in Japan in a startup called Axel Space. So Axel Space, uh, it's a company that manufactures and operates small space satellites for Earth observation. So space satellites in space like GPS and taking pictures of the Earth. And uh, today I'm gonna share with you my experience about job hunting in Japan, and in particular, my experience about internship in Japan. But first, I, I would like to thank Kawase Sensei for allowing me to speak to you today. And of course, for helping me a lot during my job hunting. So I want to start this talk with, uh, with my story. Uh, I don't know if it is going to be useful to you, but let me tell you my story anyway. So my story starts about 10 years ago. Uh, when I graduated from high school and I decided that I wanted to see the world. So thank you, Karate. Uh, so I was in Italy and uh, I was uh, uh, in Italy and I chose to study the Japanese language uh, because Japan is the place on earth 
that is most distant from Italy, both geographically and culturally. Basically, I wanted to get out, out of my comfort zone and I wanted to explore new ways of thinking. And uh, uh, let me say it, I'm not into manga or anime. Uh, so that was not the reason. By the way, I think well about how to answer the question, why have you come to Japan? Why have you chosen Japan? As the other sp speaker already pointed out, uh, because uh, you will be asked that like a lot. Uh, anyway, my major is physics, uh, science. And uh, after I came to Japan, I was a PhD student at uh, Yokohama National University. And I'm not gonna give you any details about my re education or the research, my research, for the very simple reason that usually your academic education is not going to matter a lot to your prospective employer anyway. So to say the truth, the job hunting process for humanities and for scientific majors is going to be quite different. But I'm going to try to keep my talk as generic as possible. So back to my story. When I was still living in Italy, I met uh, a Japanese girl. And she was an exchange student from the University of Tokyo. And we had a, a good time together in Italy. But then she went back to Japan and we continued our relationship long distance. Uh, so one big reason for me to come to Japan was to be reunited with her. And uh, I know that you might think that having a Japanese girlfriend helped me with the language and with job hunting. And uh, that is true with the language, but not so much with job hunting. So she was very, very busy with that job. So I had to do all the job hunting by, by myself all along. Um, so at first, when I came to Japan, as you can see in the slide, uh, I chose to do a PhD in Japan. And uh, I found a laboratory at the Yokohama National University where they were doing the kind of research that I liked. So while doing my PhD, in Japan, I gained a lot of experience working with hardware and software. And uh, my experience at uh, YNU has proven invaluable while doing job hunting. So if you want to find a job in Japan, uh, and I already think that you are, most of you are in a Japanese university, but anyway, I really strongly suggest that uh, having part of your education in Japan uh, is very important. So you can prove that you have some understanding of Japanese society and culture. So the reason I think is because firing someone in Japan is very difficult. So usually employers, they feel safer knowing that you understand the Japanese culture before hiring you. I think that's one of the main reasons. Anyway, two years ago, by chance, my girlfriend met an Italian guy uh, who was working at this Japanese startup company called Axel Space. So yes, thank you very much. Uh, at that time, I could not imagine that I would, uh, that I would end up working there. Uh, so without giving, without giving it much thought, I started this paid internship at Axel Space. And a paid internship is basically a part-time job. Uh, so it was a long, quite long internship, maybe six months. Uh, however, do notice that unpaid, very short internships in Japan are far more common. So uh, I did this internship for three main reasons. Uh, because I needed the money and uh, because it made renewing my visa easier. Uh, I was in the process of renewing my visa, student visa. I still, I didn't have a work visa yet. Uh, because, and also another, another reason is I wanted to know what working in a company feels like, because I, I was not sure if continuing with the academia, academic uh, uh, career or 
in industry career, so I wanted to know the difference. So it might come as a, as a surprise to you, but uh, I didn't know that an internship would help me with job hunting. And uh, spoiler alert, uh, doing an internship does help you like a lot. So I was much less prepared. I did much less preparation than my previous speaker. <laughs> so uh, going on, uh, while still doing the internship, uh, so I was still doing the internship and I started to do the real job hunting. So the uh, uh, interviews and so on, uh, uh, as you say, entry, entry sheet. So doing uh, internship research and job hunting all at the same time was very tough. Don't do this. So if you can, do only one thing at a time. So usually you do the internship first and then you do job hunting and then you leave the university at last. So you have been shown the, the schedule many times. So I, I, was, uh, I didn't know it. So anyway, uh, during the job hunting at first, I only focused on uh, big companies like uh, Mitsubishi Denki, NEC, and uh, I got somehow to the interview, but I failed. I failed many times because one of the following reasons. Uh, I wanted to work in the aerospace field, space field, and uh, I didn't know that foreign people uh, usually cannot be hired in the aerospace industry uh, because it is related to national defense. So that's uh, a big uh, point. So then at the time, I didn't know anything about Japanese job hunting and Japanese company culture. So even if I can speak Japanese uh, at a conversational level, so Japanese was not a problem, but the culture difference was a little, uh, I didn't know what they expected. So that was a problem. And uh, one, another reason is that they thought that I was not interested in the job enough. Anyway, long story short, uh, my girlfriend at that point, she left me after a five years relationship, it was very tough. And one reason why she left me might be because she didn't believe that I could find a job in Japan. And I wanted to prove her wrong so that I could find a job in Japan. So this strengthened my motivation actually. And I attended the online course about job hunting of the Gucci Sensei. And I sought the help of many people, including Kawase Sensei, uh, Masada Sensei, the University Support Center, and the job hunting agents. So these agents, was, they were really useful. They introduced me to many small and medium Japanese companies. And I was helped a great deal to prepare for the interview. So all the following interviews went very well. And eventually I got many offers. So, however, I chose to uh, work at Axel Space, my current company, the same company where I was doing the internship. So the internship eventually was uh, directly connected to my, uh, to my offer, to my job current job. Uh, anyway, I even got an offer with a very high salary. Uh, and I, maybe it's better if I don't say the, the, the salary, but it was very high for Japan. Anyway, I ended up rejecting that offer. The reason is that uh, I chose Axel Space because I knew and liked many of my future colleagues. And because the company culture was very open-minded and innovative, and because 40% of the employees are from 17 different countries. Uh, that's pretty unique in Japan. I think, I think pretty unique. Uh, and of course the job itself was more interesting for me and I could directly apply my skills. So this is only my opinion. So take it for what it is. But I think that you should not choose a company only because of the salary or the company name uh, I think there are more important things in life other than money and social status, but that's, uh, that's uh, your call. Uh, so 
Uh, I want to point out now some interesting differences between job hunting in Western countries uh, like Europe and uh, Japan. So first and foremost, this has already been uh, told to you many times, but the Japanese language proficiency. Um, so uh, thank you, Karate. Uh, if you don't know the Japanese language, at least at N2 level, uh, could you please go to the next slide? Uh, Karate, okay. Yes, thank you. Uh, your options are going to be very limited. Uh, so a precise estimation is difficult, but I guess that by not knowing Japanese and by not doing any effort to show that you want to learn Japanese, I think uh, maybe 95% of the doors will be closed for you. So it is true that some companies do hire applicants who cannot speak Japanese and you have been shown the companies, but I think are very few and far apart. So for this reason, don't expect the interview to be in English. Uh, however, uh, I don't mean that you need to be as fluent as a native speaker. Of course, if you can communicate well enough to get through the interview, you have shown that you have enough willingness to improve your Japanese in the future. So they are usually satisfied. So another big difference between Japan and other countries is that your personality attitude teamwork and communication skills are valued more than your technical skills, uh, usually. Uh, there are exceptions, but this is, the, uh, this is uh, more or less the, uh, the overall trend. So this is because in Japan, Japanese companies usually don't value the university education very much, and they will train you after entering the company anyway. So uh, another reason is that the companies usually like to fill the management positions from the internal workforce instead of hiring from outside. So they expect you, the new hires, to stay within the company for a long, longish time. So they want you to be a good fit for the company culture. Um, another factor that is of, um, often uh, underestimated uh, so could you please go to next uh, next slide? Um, next one, please. Uh, next one, yeah, sorry. Uh, so this is, uh, I think, uh, the last slide. So another factor that it is often underestimated by foreigners is timing and schedule. So in many countries, you first get a degree and then you don't do job hunting. In Japan, you first get job hunt, uh, the job and then you graduate. Um, I think that uh, since I'm quite short on time and this has already been uh, told you so many times. Uh, so I, I think uh, I can maybe skip this. So, so keep in mind that uh, timing is very important and schedule is very important. So I want to leave you with a final piece of advice that is uh, find help. So you are not alone and there are so many people and organizations here in Japan to help foreign students to do job hunting. And I think this is uh, one of the most amazing, amazing things about Japan. So. All of this is free of charge, uh, it, so you just need to ask. And the first place to start is your university job hunting support center. And there are many agents and organizations and scholarships to help you. So I thought that I was good enough uh, to do everything by myself, uh, but I was wrong. So find help. Uh, thank you for your attention and good luck with the job hunting in Japan. Good luck. Thank you. Um, thanks, uh, Giorgio. Very well informed about not just about internships in Japan, but also about how um, job hunting generally functions in Japan. Um, there are some very key points which are pointed out by Giorgio, including uh, the lifelong employment system, how that functions in potential base hiring and other things like that. Now, um, for everyone who's watching, uh, please be aware that there is no way we can cover all of these 
questions and topics in one session. Um, MSA has some other um, like uh, like le webinars. I just put the link inside uh, the chat for anybody who wants to look at a few of our other career-based webinars. So yeah, if you want to take a look at those, please do so. Um, okay, so I'm next and uh, please let me share my slides and uh, so that I can talk to you a bit about what I have been through and my own understanding about yeah, how I can actually help all of you. Um, so, uh, yeah, um, my slides visible. Everyone okay? Can you can you see my slides? Yes, we can see clearly. So, um, yeah, it's me, Austin. Uh, not quite a few of you have already seen me talk multiple times, and uh, so uh, today I'll be talking about particularly about internships in Japan. Once again, um, we've got lots of space for questions. If you have any questions, please put them inside the Q&A, not the chat. We may not look, look at the chat. Okay, so um, internships in Japan. Now, uh, this is actually a quite a unintuitive topic for many people because the, when people use the word internships in Japan, they mean things which can be very different from what they mean overseas. We have this understanding of a one-day internship in Japan, and I do want to go a bit into that before I talk about my own experiences. But anyway, um, just a bit of a short introduction. Uh, people, many, most of you are Mac scholars here, and you may know me of me as the president of Mac Scholars Association. I also do lecture about uh, these kind of topics, like what I am doing right now. Um, that's not my day job, though. My day job is that I am actually a, a programmer, um, but I also do interpretation and translation between Japanese and English. Um, I have a blog where I write a lot about career topics in Japan. So if you want to take a look at that, there is a lot of information that could help you in text. Uh, so yeah, happy reading. Um, so anyway, just uh, going into the main part of this topic, why are you here today? You, you're here today because clearly you're thinking about finding a job in Japan or, or internships are normal where you're from. Uh, you know that you have some gap of time during the holidays and or that you're kind of sick or scared of the typical job hunting process and you want to do things a different way. Job hunting is painful. So the thing is that if you can get a job away from um, to get a job in an easier, faster, and a way that actually gives you strengths, that works on your strengths instead of like, you know, deepening your weaknesses, then why not go for it, right? And this is actually what internships can give you in Japan. But it's a bit more, more complicated than that because you have things like this, one-day internships. For most people, at least where I come from as well, an internship is something that you do five days a week, um, pretty much full day, uh, full time hours for let's say three months during the holidays. But Japan has does have these things, but it's a bit more muddled. So the thing is that we want you, we just want to explain a bit about what exactly is happening. Um, so I'll be talking about these two things. What exactly is a short-term internship? Why do you have to go for these? And the long-term internship, uh, which uh, George, which I think like Georgia mentioned more. Um, and uh, so, and from there, we can look at the options that each of you has. Um, okay, so let's start with the short-term internship because they're more uh, easy to explain. So the short-term internships are more of what Kawase-sensei actually mentioned uh, on um, in her presentation, as well as what Abi mentioned regarding uh, the internships that you look for on uh, MyNabi and Rikunabi. Now, uh, instead of using the word internships for them, I would suggest you that you recognize more, them more for work experience or work exposure programs for a short period of time, usually less than a week, you don't really do work. You may go through some group discussions and stuff like that, or like you may what like like some basic group work and presentations, and uh, so and so it's not really work in the thing in uh, in the way that people think about internships usually. Why do people do it though? Why do companies do it? This is a way for companies to kind of get a feel for the applicants. Some applicants kind of give like a priority list, but also to brand brand themselves to applicants so that you know you have a deeper impression about their particular company versus another company which you may also be applying to. So that is the reason why short-term internships exist in Japan. Now, then the other question, and the other question is: um, so what exactly? 
duties entail. Usually it's one to five days. The majority of these are inside the summer vacations. I believe most of the applications for these have already closed, um, usually not paid. Um, the minority in winter. Usually you're looking at three semesters before you graduate is the rough idea. Uh, if you're an autumn um, graduate, it's a bit more complicated. Uh, it becomes two semesters, but yes. Uh, and most usually, usually I don't really hear of online uh, short-term internships, though those may have happened, but things are going back to normal right now. So companies don't want to bring you in into their office for these kinds of programs. Now, it's not as if we don't want to enjoy our holidays, right? So the question is, if you are looking to build a career in Japan, what points is there in going for a five-day internship? You're not going to get work experience. You're not, okay, not, not going to get paid. So why even bother? Um, the thing is that this short-term internship um, system does have its benefits, which is why so many Japanese students actually go for them. Let's take a look at why. Um, basically, if you apply for a short-term internship and you pass a competitive company, that is a signal for further companies down the road to say, that, oh, this person passed this competitive company's um, summer intern or winter intern. This is a signaling effect that happens in the job hunting process. The second thing is backdoors. Um, it's gotten a bit more blatant and obvious in recent years, but there are cases where companies will look at the quality of discussion, see that this person in particular may be very interesting or very enthusiastic, and they will bring you out for coffee or something like that for a deeper conversation. These things do happen, but it requires that you perform very well in these kinds of occasions. Another thing is this. Yes, you are getting a very curated and very, in a sense, right, like, um, beginner friendly worst version of work because you are not really required to perform but when you do not have any work experience and this applies for anybody for particularly for the people who are who are you listening here who have not had a career where you are from right like uh in your home country any experience is better than nothing the information that you gather through a short-term internship in a company may be something that can help you differentiate yourself in an interview, in your further job hunting processes. And companies like this kind of things because companies like to see students which are enthusiastic and therefore have gone for these kind of internships. They are also looking for people who kind of get business and have some information that sets them apart from other candidates. So this is why um, it is still valuable to participate. And how do you find them? Um, yeah, I would just say Google is your best friend here. Um, most summer internships, I believe that their uh, there are, there are applications may have closed already. You may still find them. But yeah, you just Google Niju Yonsotsu Winta Intern. This is for like uh, for the winter, the winter internships for the end of the year at the beginning of, last, of next year. Um, or if you still want to look for internships for this year, Niju Yonsotsu Sama Intern. Notice that I'm using Japanese here. Why? Because most of these uh, programs with the exception of, there are exceptions like in Ape mentioned, most of these programs are done in Japanese and you will be doing these with Japanese candidates, which means that they by, de by default, they would require a relatively advanced level of Japanese. Uh, so yes, so that's, the, that's one thing. Uh, so let's move on to long-term internships. This goes on more towards what Giorgio mentioned in his uh, presentation. Um, but uh, while I say long-term internships, right, I did mention that overseas, much of the idea of an internship is spending five days a week, eight hours a day, doing work as an intern in a company. Mm, there is still a difference between what how, how things work in Japan and this. So let's look a bit more into this. Um, Long-term internships are pretty much Baito++ plus plus in Japan. You are expected to do work. You are expected to learn while you're doing work. And, and, and the thing is that this should be a proper working experience for you. You get trusted with some tasks. They have some responsibility. And you're pretty much a, a junior employee that's only a junior part-time employee. Um, why do companies do this? Because it is a way for them to get another helping hand. Usually, which um, we assume that you know, like a helping hand, maybe with some specialist skills such as programming or language skills. And it's also a chance for them to kind of try out how each and every one of us are 
as employees before they formally send you a letter for a letter a offer letter for your job for you it is a chance to not just earn something because you probably will get paid for this but also a chance to kind of get to see how a company is how they work inside instead of just looking at the outside pr so yeah that's that's one thing that you need to be, uh, be aware of uh so yeah vital plus plus um just adding a bit more information about this yes it is vital plus plus because the idea it's not that these kind of long-term internships are usually not limited to just the holidays these are usually opportunities where you're actually doing work two or three times a week in term time as well. You are paid vital wages. Um, so uh, if a bit something is a bit more specialized, maybe 1,200 yen a, um, a, an hour, 1,005 is 1,000. Uh, 1050 is normal, so did pretty much vital wages. Um, year round, because the thing is that the companies which need these kinds of like internal help tend to be strapped like for employ strapped for um human resources in the first place, so therefore they need help for uh year round. No, there's no um uh, limit on which academic year you are. PhDs often very welcome as well, and they can be remote as long as you are doing your work. So um, why participate? You probably have guessed already, actually, but there's money. Um, we like money. Uh, money is also why we do work in the end, if we're a full-time work, right? Another thing is backdoors. Um, the short-term internship backdoor is a backdoor to that particular company. A long-term internship backdoor can be to that particular company, but if you impress somebody enough, it is also very common that you catch the eye of somebody and he says that, and, and they say that, you know, I'm not sure whether we can hire you long uh, full term, but the thing is that I have friends in other places. You gain advocates for yourself, and that can be very powerful in Japan, given how Japan is very trust and human network relations based. You also get a job and it's a very strong edge in job hunting because from my experience as well, looking at people who have done internships and otherwise, right? When it comes to an interview in the job hunting, right? The quality of response, the quality of your answer is very different from somebody who has gone through a long-term internship in Japan versus somebody who hasn't because a long-term internship person has seen the work, done the work, understood the work. Talk to people who have been doing the work, talk to leadership. And so this is this confers a very big edge in job hunting as well, aside from just having something on top of your resume. And this links to the last point. Many of you here, and I'm assuming there are quite a few of you here, are not very sure whether you want to stay in Japan to work. This is normal. This is normal and this is perfectly logical as a human being because you're not really sure how things work. My own experience and what I can recommend to everybody is that the easiest way for you to make that decision, make an informed decision about this, is to enter Japanese society in a way that is low risk. What do you have then? Long-term internships. Therefore, long-term internships are the way for you to actually get a taste of Japanese working culture, Japanese working dynamics, the kinds of work which exist in industry, in society, without actually going full in as a full employee. So yeah, definitely highly recommended for me as a choice for you to build your career in Japan. So how do you find them then? And we got a question inside the, um, the, the chat. I saw that, how do you find these kind of things? The, the problem is that there is no formula. Um, what do you mean by this? Because like um, this is kind of like finding work. There is no real formula to finding work and the shukatsu system does not really work here. Um, but the thing is, there's a few ways for you to angle your search for long-term internships. Number one, be aware that long-term internships generally are offered by small, medium companies and startups because they really need the manpower. The second thing is, you need to think about what you yourself can provide to a company as an intern. If you are bilingual, if you have strong bilingual skills, that is what you can provide. You can provide translation support, you can provide um, like research on overseas markets. Uh, then you need to think about, yeah, who wants this? Like if you're a programmer as well, oh, you, you, have, you should have no problem finding an internship, but yeah, um, think about, so if I am from a certain part of the world, I can provide specialty knowledge about that part of the world. 
what kind of company would want um, a somebody from with this expertise? Probably a company that is expanding to my part of the world or already has an office there. These are ways that you can actually angle your search for companies um, which are in the space that may actually be relevant for uh, relevant to you. Okay. Um, but yeah, you. One thing I would say um, about this topic: please don't have extremely high expectations. If you, do, especially if you do not have any um, working experience outside of Japan, and even if you do have working experience outside of Japan, but you do not have experience within Japan, you have to start somewhere. And intern work is not sexy usually. So yeah, but the thing is, it can pay off a lot in the long run. So just go for opportunities that you can find. Is one piece of advice that I have. Um, and so how do you get your hands on one? Um, we've got a few like options here. Honestly speaking, my sense is that long-term internships, the majority of them tend to come from personal introductions. This is why building your network, um, as Kawase Sensei mentioned at the beginning of her presentation, is extremely important because you have no idea what kind of sudden opportunity comes flying in into your, your Facebook Messenger or your Telegram or whatever you use just because you knew somebody at a party. And this is actually extremely common, really. So be aware of that. Number two, we do have some platforms. You have LinkedIn, which has some in, uh, uh, internship postings. Wantedly, as mentioned by Apey, is actually the, the biggest uh, platform that I'm aware of that actually offers like internships. LinkedIn is a smaller company that's actually starting to build its presence in this sphere. But yeah, we have a few of these. One other thing that most people don't do, though, which is a bit underutilized, is just directly emailing a company. Now, success rates aren't high, but nobody is going to feel offended that you that that you that you apply directly to somewhere, saying that you know I'm 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 this person and I can help I can help you in this way. Would you mind like thinking of thinking of me as a, a potential intern? Yeah. So that's one thing that you could do. I just want to talk about my own personal experience here. Um, so I did three long-term internships when I was a student. Uh, be aware that uh, I actually am a bachelor's in political science, Japanese domestic politics. But my internships actually were very crucial in me changing my, uh, my profession. I do translation still, but the thing is that I'm an engineer right now. So let me talk a bit about more about what how I got my internships and how that all panned out. Um, so all my internships came from coincidences. And this is why I will reiterate the point of how important it is for you to build your network. Okay, one wasn't, so one was LinkedIn. I made a half complete LinkedIn account one day when my second year of my bachelor's and out of nowhere, a few months later, I get an email inviting me to be an intern at a startup it was unpaid so i mean like you know but i i didn't have anything other but better to do and i had time so why not so i do i get i got there and that became the first bit of um, experience that i had in the working world and they really liked me and they gave me an, a job offer the second uh way that i got the second long-term internship that i actually did was firstly i went to a dorm party friend that i met over there and got to know over there uh, said that a place that he's interning there needs a one-time translation job. I went, I go for the translation job and I do the, and I do that one day work for them. They like me. And so they asked me for a long-term internship. This turns out to be the company that I joined after I finished my bachelor's actually. So this is the particular company and this is how I got my first job without actually doing a single day of the typical job hunting process. Another way I got an internship was from volunteering. I was the uh, the vice president of the uh, Singaporean Students Association when I was a, when I was a student, and that led me to an internship because like uh, one of our partners back then was like, oh, do you want to come for an internship after that? What my point is that you never really know what kinds of things your network can give you, and so building your network is very important for you to get these kinds of chance. Um, opportunities and these kinds of chance opportunities can be the thing that gives you the job at the end of the day especially with by while avoiding the pains of the job hunting process one thing is a few things as well i do want to talk about here are that 
Unfortunately, many student, many um, employers don't have a particularly good impression of foreign students. This is because, um, and I, of course, I'm not justified in doing so. There's things, there's people who think that foreign students quit very easily. Um, there's like a, the, the, people will worry about your Japanese ability and these kinds of issues. Internships are a way for you to overcome these kinds of negative stereotypes by you showing what you can do in actual work. This is why long-term internships are actually a very favorable place for foreign students, especially bright people like all of us here, um, to show your work to people. And also the experience really here, I, I would say that you know doing long-term uh, internships in my student days was actually what increased and, and um, I accelerated my career by probably around two years worth. Even when I started uh, doing my work, uh, started uh, joining the society and starting and starting uh, full time work, um, because I already knew so much that people already were, was doing. So yeah, just these two points about my own personal experience. So um, that's all I really have to say for today. Sorry, I speak fast, but we don't really have that much time. Once again, we I have a blog. And I write a lot about articles regarding uh, career planning for foreign students. And if you want to hear, read more, more about what I think, how you this can help, how um, you can plan your careers, how you can overcome things like the language, please take a look at my blog. And so thank you very much to everyone for listening to my presentation. And uh, that concludes all the presentations that we have for today. Um, so uh, could I have all the speakers on with your mics and um and your and your cameras on? Um, just wanted to check. Uh, do you think like we should do a five minute break for now, or do you think we can just continue with the Q and A? And people, please put your questions inside your Q and A. The Q and A is very lonely right now with only two questions. And uh, so yes, please put your questions inside the Q and A. Once again, I'm we are we may not look at the chat. Look at open the Q and A and put in your questions. Also, um, the Q and A for the Q and A, you can upvote each other's questions. So if you actually want to take a look at uh, if there's a question that you actually already want to see, uh, want to answer, uh, want to, to be answered, please upvote the questions. Um, yeah, um, and uh, Giorgio has already like uh, answered two of them. So please, if you are, if you want to look at the written answers for Giorgio, um, please uh, take a look at the at the answered questions already. Okay, so um, what does everybody think? A uh, little break, or should we just continue? Hmm. Okay. Thank you, Austin. I'm, I'm going to repeat. I'm going to repeat. Put your questions inside the Q&A. If not, I'm going to ignore them. <laughs> the chat is not the Q&A. The people were sending us individual messages. The chat is not the Q&A. Uh, Jojo and Abe, so please answer uh, their questions uh, because uh, your experiences is the most uh, useful for uh, participants, I think. Yeah, um, so let's just, okay, I think we are okay, right? Nobody needs to urgently go to the toilet or anything, right? <laughs> okay, yeah. let's, let's, let's start. Um, and uh, so um, number one, let's look at um, uh, the, the most uh, uh, people, put more questions, please. Put more questions, please. Um, and so I'm gonna, I'll just answer, I'm just gonna answer the, the first one that the most recent one that came, that came in. Um, so number one, how long do long-term internships start last usually? Uh, they last until one party doesn't want them to continue anymore, pretty much. Because it's like a bito, right? It's a bito. So um, if you if you can't handle the internship anymore, you tell the company that I cannot handle the internship anymore, or I want to do other things, and it will end. Um, if you are if the company says that isn't really happy with your work, um, they can also say that we don't want you anymore, and it will end. Um, now there are some exceptions. For example, on LinkedIn in particular, let's say Google does an internship, uh, a long-term internship. A long-term internship for Google would probably be like they have a stated period of three months because they are planning, they are aiming at particular summertime internships only. Mm -hmm. So these kind of things do exist, but generally speaking, the formula for long-term internships in Japan that I mentioned for two or three days a week um, that can go as long as um, as it as as you want provided that both parties are agreeable. Does anybody want to add on to that? Any, any further comments about the, about the um, 
about the about the, the, the period of the long-term internships? Yeah, so yeah, I just want Come to in. mention one uh, one thing about the long-term internship. So there there is two methods to find an internship. Like you can directly apply to the company website or find through the social media, or you can get some internship from your senpai who is working in the company. They can recommend you. One more type of internship, some of the university labs, they have the collaboration with the companies. Like if you are a master's student or a PhD student in particular lab, your professor might have some collaboration with the companies to support in their internal projects. Uh, this is my first experience, what I did my internship at Nissan Motors. So my lab have the collaboration with the company and every, every year they recruit eight students from the department to uh, work with their live projects. So uh, in my time, I got selected for that internship uh, with the, uh, that was the collaboration project with my lab and the Nishan. And that was a five month internship project. It's a live project and you will work like a, a full-time employee. So you can also check with your lab or your uh, department. Okay. Um, so uh, thank you for, uh, for the add-on, Abe. Uh, we put another question here, which I think is a good one. Assuming that one is an undergraduate who has gotten a night or like basically a job offer at the end of their third year, how do you recommend that they maximize their time in the last year of university? Um, this is actually the same thing for master's students. Master students who who have like you know more than three uh three um uh three semesters like two semesters left until you graduate like what do you do in your last year? There's a few things you could do. If you already have a job offer and you have um and you have some time that's until graduation, right? Basically, one thing you could do is uh simply enjoy. <laughs> you could enjoy. <laughs> I mean, like, I totally you know, you know, agree with you. <laughs> But now, if you want to, for example, still go and the extra mile and to develop your career, there's nothing stopping you for getting another internship. And many companies still will want the help for uh, you and um, from you, especially because you kind of have the honor of getting a job offer already. So some other company has, has seen that you're trustable. And so um, if you want to develop your career, or you want to continue like, you know, like earning money through Baito, like, you know, like a good Baito and learn and learn while doing so, you can always go for more, more long-term internships is my response. Please make your friends, uh, Japanese friends, uh, more Japanese friends. Uh, it is very good, expert, good experience for you and your future career in Japan, I think. Mm. I would like uh, to add a point. Yes, please. Mm -hmm. um, so. If you have already a night an offer, uh, you have much more leverage when you do an interview. And sometimes uh, you can ask a higher salary, uh, especially at uh, startups where you can negotiate. And if you already have an offer on your side, you have much more leverage, so use it. And actually, there are many people who, after getting their first like job offer, will actually continue job hunting as well, using their first job offer as for the leverage as well. So that's another option. Um, so, um, so we have a question directed to Ape regarding the SPI. Uh, who Ape has, has kindly um, answered that through text already. Yeah, um, I I believe that. Um, Mm, okay, so um, SP, SPI, I just do want to like add a bit on onto that. So for people who are not aware, the SP, SPI test is a standardized formalized testing for your basic skills whatsoever. I think it is torture. Um, it is torture, yes. And, uh, and uh, the question is how important is it, it, it is. Generally speaking, hard to say. Um, do some companies offer SPIs in English? Yes, but rare. Toyota does, I think, I believe, like, you know, like if you're really interested in hiring foreign students, they do, but generally they do not. And if they do not, and if you are just applying for a job with all the other Japanese candidates, you're expected to have the same score. 
and that's the same pass line. Uh, do they particularly look at your scores as a foreign student and be more lenient with you? If your if the way that you're applying is through a clearly stated foreign student recruitment drive, maybe yes. Otherwise, no. It, you will be graded in the same way as the other Japanese candidates. Yeah, that's true. I think SPI test is uh, it's a, like a conventional um, method if you are applying to the new as a new graduate, and that's all in the Japanese. I didn't find SPI test in English, uh, so yeah, might be some companies offer, but it's like a um, conventional method for all foreigners of the Japanese. Yeah, much agreed on that. Um, people, questions, please put more questions and don't just put questions, like upvote each other's questions so that we can actually have a priority. Um, I just wanna, I, I do want to answer, okay, so there's one from an anonymous person. I actually had to apply to a long-term internship in a China-based company, but my worry is that I might not get a taste of Japanese working culture and might have no time in joining a summer internship, thanks. Um, okay, to rephrase the question, I am assuming that this refers to that the person is thinking of whether um, they can go to China for an internship first, but that would take away opportunities in Japan. Um, there is no easy answer to this. It's, it's, each of them has their, their, their benefits, right? So like, you know, just have to go through a bit of a thought process. Number one, as I mentioned in my, my, my presentation, all experience is better than no experience. If you do not have a Japanese internship already and you have a Chinese uh, China-based internship to, to go to, please go for the China-based internship. That experience may still be important for you when you come back to Japan, but it's better than having no experience. Now, but if you want to think about, okay, I have this and I have this, so which one do I need to go to? Um, depends on what you want. To, uh, what you want. If, you, if, you, if you want to, like, uh, if you're thinking of, of a career in Japan more seriously, then maybe waiting for a summer internship may be more useful. It depends on your goals. So you kind of need to have the logic or figure it out for yourself. So you, you can make use of your uh, internship experience for uh, Japanese, uh, for applying uh, Japanese uh, companies, I think. So the important point is to summarize uh, what to summarize what you experienced and you what you learned you learned and you gained uh, as skills so uh, if you can you can share uh, these points in Japanese uh, you can mm, uh, you can appear your experience uh, to uh, towards the uh, uh, Japanese companies so be confident okay um, and okay, um, it's very useful. Uh, useful web website. If you uh, if you want to uh, search uh, search for Japanese companies, uh, long term internship from now. So please take a look at uh, look for the uh, link in. Okay, sorry. Okay, <laughs> no, uh, sorry, Austin. Um, okay, so we actually had a question that um, is inside the answered ones already, um, and uh, but I think I would like to have a verbal response for everyone here because it's quite important to get like some um, some. A verbal response, I think. What would you say was something you learned in your internship that directly helped you in you in your career afterwards? Uh, maybe some of Georgia, like you know, like um, what would you say was something that you learned in your internship that directly helped you in your career afterwards? I would say two things. One thing uh, you you come to realize what you like or what you don't like. Mm. You may like your internship. Or you may not like it. So at least you know uh, what this can guide you in your choice. Mm. And the second thing is um, uh, usually uh, your, if it is a startup, in my case, uh, you are not even with uh, uh, enough information usually. So you need to learn how to ask questions. Asking questions when you don't know something and uh, communicating with people. It's very important. So teamwork. Mm -hmm. Ape, your experience? Uh, yeah, so uh, during my three internships in Japan, I mostly focused on understanding the world culture because it's quite important. Why personally think? Because your behavior, how you present yourself in front of the employees is very much important. And uh, yes, uh, knowing about the company and knowing about the business part is important but what i personally 
uh, mostly focused on understanding the work culture in the internships during the internships my own experience is actually like um quite similar to everyone's i mean i i, I so for me I got to know what I didn't want to do. My first internship was in a recruitment firm, a hit hunting firm. Got it, learned a lot, did a lot of stuff. I think my 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 eyesight, uh, my eyesight, like you know, got damaged by reading so many re resumes. Uh, and um, but yeah, and uh, but I know that I knew after that that it's I know the industry, but I don't want to be part of that. So that's number one, okay? But number two is the internships which I did are precisely how I managed to become from a political science major into an engineer right now. Because mm -hmm. they started throwing things at me, go learn this, do this, go learn this, do this. And guess what? I get paid for doing this. You will not get paid for doing this as a full-time employee, not that much, I think. Um, especially from a political science graduate, okay? It is possible. But the internship was probably something that smoothed out the process a lot. So getting the hard skills and the opportunity to explore outside my supposed field was actually i think a very important part of my experience in my internship um so um, we, we've got um a question i think this is very relevant because most of the i'm assuming that a big proportion of all our participants today probably have some work experience outside of uh, japan so um this question is i worked in a company for 1.5 years and came to Japan for masters. Is experience as a previous employee, uh, does experience as a previous employee outside of Japan have some effect during job interviews? Do you need an internship in Japan? Um, thoughts about this? I believe like um, Abe, you've had, you've had experience outside of Japan working, right? Yes, I work in India for more than two years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, any, any thoughts about this topic or like, uh, like uh, Giorgio as well, yeah. Uh, sorry, I didn't get the context. Um, sorry? Yeah, I didn't get the context. Which question you were asking? Okay, so this is the one with like the one vote. Um, I worked in a, uh, with one vote. Um, I worked in a company for one for five years and ah. came to Japan for masters. Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah, but yeah. So in Japan, if you are going for the full time job uh, as after after the masters, so if you have the experience less than three years you will be counted as a fresher because in japan experience counts after three years in india or any other country if you if you have a one year experience two year experience they will count you as experience but in japan if you have experience less than three you will be counted as a uh, fresh graduate although there is option to apply as a mid-career option or a new graduate but mid Mid career option, you can apply like it's not a conventional method of application. You can apply to any time, but if you have experience less than uh, three years, you should apply as a new graduate because it will not count as experience. Uh, Giorgio, do you have anything to add on this? Uh, yes, I I don't have any working experience uh, abroad, but I would like to add that uh, keep in mind that the. The hiring process of uh, middle term employment and hiring process of uh, new graduate employment is completely different. Mm. So um, it takes much less time uh, and much less effort as a mid, uh, mid, uh, how do you say, mid career. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, so I just want to add on to this. As mentioned by the two other responses so far, um, you can actually job hunt as a mid-career uh, in Japan. Um, and uh, But whether that is, go how successful that will be will depend on whether how much your previous experience fits your fits Japan's market. Now, if you're an IT engineer, not an issue. If you're a mechanical engineer, not really an issue. If you are, um, if you are, if you have translation experience into Japanese outside of Japan and you want to do the same job in Japan, not an issue at all. In fact, it's probably welcome. But if you were doing sales and marketing abroad, and you are, if you are applying to do so in Japan, there will be issues because the way that sales and marketing like have, works in Japan is very different. Um, however, if you are doing overseas sales and marketing for a company in Japan, now then it can be applicable. So the thing is that previous experience can be a plus. 
and may allow you to apply for a job in a mid-career setting, but that is only to the extent that your experience is applicable to your workplace or the industry in Japan. So you have to think about things from your own perspective. And if you do not know about, if you don't know clearly what you are, what your what the situation is, please do your research. Yeah, sorry, I I meant from the perspective of uh, engineering science. Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah, definitely. yeah, me too. Like I applied for the system engineer or the industrial engineering. So in that case, uh, like uh, or, or maybe engineering management course. Not like maybe you all aware when you apply for a new graduate, there is option to apply as a general uh, employment or in a particular like field, like a system engineer or IT engineer. But in if you are applying to the general course, then uh, if you get the offer, then company will tell you like in which department you can work as a general employee. But if you are applying for a particular in department like a system engineer or R&D department or a production de department, that might work. Uh, like depends upon the experience requirement. Yeah. Um, says, do you want to add anything about that regarding like um, candidates who have uh, experience overseas uh, trying to job hunt in Japan? Yeah, uh, thank you for asking. Uh, um, if you have uh, work experience outside of Japan, uh, I, I recommend uh, you use you use uh, uh, agency service for mid-career. Uh, so I will, I will fill in the uh, popular popular agency service in Japan uh, to the uh, chat box so or Q and A box so please take a look at chat box. Mm -hmm. okay. So yeah, um, once again, uh, to repeat for that, if you are actually trying to do things mid-career, um, many times um, hit hunters and job agents will actually be your friends here. So uh, uh, Kawase Sensei will be adding information in the uh, chat box. So please take a look at that. Um, Kawase Sensei, you, uh, it does look like you want to answer the uh, the person who asked about um, nine years in the field of finance and accounts in India. Um, do, do, uh, do you want to answer this question or? Ah, yeah, same as uh, I mentioned uh, before. So please take a look at the agency okay. service. Yeah, okay. Once again, so if you have lots of experience in Japan, um, okay, so um, I just want to add about a bit about this. Uh, there is unfortunately a um, a kind of an age type of thing here. Um, and so it's very kind of hard for people who are above 30 to try to do mid, like fresh graduate hiring. And so, and and uh, this is not this is not like you know like to demean anybody. This is just a statement of fact uh, that it's that once you're beyond a certain age, companies will be like, "Are you really a fresh graduate?" So in which case, and trying to do things by mid career will probably be better, increase your success rate, and also increase your starting pay. Important point. Um, yeah, and um, so uh, Kausi Sensei has uh, listed um, three. Um, yeah, three. Uh, Mm. Yeah, no, these are quite well known uh, mid career hit hunting services, RGF, Robert Walters, and uh, Career Forum. Uh, but there's many of them other than that. So you can just Google if you really need to. Um, I am guessing that the, that the two voted uh, next question is directed to me as somebody who has gone from a political science to a computer science kind of thing. Um, now, <laughs> I don't necessarily want everybody to become a programmer, yeah? I mean, like, I, I do think it's bad for the eyes. Uh, so, yeah, but um, if anybody's interested, and also because we also understand that IT is in demand right now, if you really want to learn, what I would say is that there is tons of resources online. Do go for online courses. If you want, there is also in-person courses. Do your stuff. But also the biggest thing that you need to do as a beginning programmer is to show a portfolio of things that you have created yourself. So if you really want to do become a programmer, go for the courses, do your stuff, um, build a portfolio, then look for your first like you know like a coding internship, or just do open source volunteering online and these kind of things, and all this will help. Um, programmers like translators like designers are portfolio based jobs you what you have done is an indicator of what you can do and so as long as you build that you actually can you're actually safe is my little response to that um we have one last question 
So I'm in Japan right now and will start my master's this October. I actually want to apply for an internship in Singapore. Is it possible? And how can I find the recruitment information? I'm Singaporean, but I don't know because I know Japan more than I know Singapore. So I'm like, um, well, um, I don't really know about this. Does anybody know about this that can answer this? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I mentioned one company about Wantedly. Mm. So this this is the Japanese con company, but they have the Singapore operations also. So you can go on the website, choose the location, Singapore, and you will get the all the job information, industry in information about the Singaporean startups. Um, yeah, uh, so there we have they uh, wanted to have a Singaporean office. I've met them once before, but uh, not very not very that big in Singapore yet. Uh, but they they still have lots of startups on their platform. Um, but um, just to say that I do not know how the visa works in this case. Um, I believe that the person who's asking this is Vietnamese. Um, you do have free entry into Singapore because of like ASEAN, but um, but but now for work purposes, I wouldn't know. So, is it possible? Yes, I'm sure people have done it before. How do you do it? I have no idea. So please do your own research. So um, that's actually all we have in our question list. And um, so I'm going to leave 30 seconds for people to put a new question. If not, we are going to close the session. This is for me to kind of try to incentivize people to ask more questions. We only have 10 more minutes left anyway, but... Um, does anybody want to ask anything, or does any of the speakers want to comment about something that uh, that uh, comment about something that we um, skipped over or something of um, just now? Any of the speakers? How about Abe and Jojo? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's please. Yeah, uh, please, please give your comment. Comment your co highs. <laughs> Do any of the speakers want to ask a question to any other of the speakers? Mm. Good question. Nice. Mm. Questions. Um, Is there, are there questions? Okay. And do you have any comments for uh, our participants mm. uh, or their for their future career or job hunting in Japan? It's a, it's the ending. So I have I have one question uh, for the Jojo. Like uh, you completed your PhD in Japan, so I'm don't have any experience for the job hunting as a PhD guy. Uh, so it's my personal observations like in Japan, uh, job options for the PhD is uh, very narrow. Like you don't have much op options as a PhD guy until and unless you have I, uh, like I a big technical problem. background. So what's your opinion if you are not a PhD from a, like IT or a you know, like core technology, uh, what is the job options av available in Japan? If you are from a social science or a management or a engineering ma management background. Okay, so the answer is uh, uh, twofold. If uh, you want to directly apply your uh, experience, PhD uh, knowledge, and if it can be applied in some field, uh, your, you will be very limited. Mm -hmm. So maybe uh, a few companies, three, four companies, and uh, you will have quite high chances of success. Uh, but um, if you cannot apply your PhD experience like me, so I did uh, high energy physics, that is not a uh, uh, applicable to to reality, let's say. So in that case, you will be mostly treated like everybody else. Mm. Of course, uh, on a personal level, they will understand that you are a PhD student, but on paper, the process will be, let's say, the same as a master student. Mm. Okay, thank you. Just to add on, we actually have um, a webinar about this um, this topic uh, two months ago. So I just put the link inside the chat. Uh, this was with um, 
other, uh, talking about PhD students, and this is with uh, Ida Sang, um, who is another career counselor in the in the field. So if people want to take a look at it, please take a look at the um, at, at the link in the bottom. This is um, another uh, of our webinars which we put on YouTube. Um, but yeah, so just just to, just to be aware of that. I, I also wanted to say like you know I, we didn't really answer in, in terms of uh, in terms of like a in, in voice to think about salaries, companies versus postdoc. Um, uh, yeah, as Giorgio mentioned, joining company, no brainer, it is true. Um, and in terms of progression as well, like, you know, like joining companies, no brainer. Yes, usually, usually, unless you are in a very, very hot field, like IT, you know, like AI, AI development or something like that. So yes, uh, just, just be aware of that. So, um, if we don't have anything else, um, okay, so let's actually do, um, uh, I, I have, uh, yes. uh, one thing. So there was a one person that actually asked about internship uh, in Axel Space. Yeah. And uh, Austin, you gave a very good uh, advice, piece of advice. Uh, even if you don't find any information on their homepage, please send a mail, ask them. Uh, for personal experience in Axel Space, they are very open to new internship students, even if there is not an open position in the webpage. Mm. Agreed. Um, all, yeah, and uh, just remember, like sometimes the opportunities are not there, but you have to make the opportunities, right? So I just wanted to, um, and just uh, to uh, to answer the question that we just received, um, uh, webinars up, are uploaded on MSA's YouTube channel. Um, the You can see those in the YouTube links I've put inside the chat. Um, once they are uploaded, I will also um, publicize them through the MSA uh, social media and uh, mailing list platforms. So the thing is that please look at those. Uh, and uh, such as if you would, if you want to follow us on Facebook, uh, we have our, we have a, uh, what do you call it? Uh, we have our, uh, our channel here. So, okay. So let's conclude the session because we have four minutes left. Um, I just wanted to ask every single of the speakers, like, you know, one piece of advice that you want to give. To your to your um to to all the people who are listening here um all the people who are as you can see uh mainly mech scholars but also like uh, but also like in one or two years mainly one or two years um um like you know uh <laughs> we got one question actually um like georgia you want to answer this uh yeah, but anyway, so it's uh, YouTube, YouTube, it's uh, yeah, YouTube, it's uh, please follow our social media and you can get the thing on YouTube. Uh, yeah, and uh, so we got a question about like getting rejected before. <laughs> uh, so what? what any response, Giorgio? Bro, I don't. Giorgio, uh, how can you I answer? Say the worst that can happen is that you will be rejected uh, once again. Yes. <laughs> the worst that can happen. Yeah. Um. So. No harm trying, and um, so there are some companies which have a policy of um, of around um, of like not considering a reapplication for within one year. But I mean, like you know, you can always just reach out. It's not as if they're gonna come and kill you, right? So the thing is that so so like you know, no harm in that. But anyway, back back uh, back to the thing. Let's have one one last closing like remark from each of the each of the speakers here. Um, Kawase Sensei, do you want to go first? Like you know, a piece of one last piece of advice that can help other people help the people here one piece of advice okay so uh thank you for asking uh uh yeah uh when you international students uh think about your future career uh i want you to remember uh why did you come to uh study uh, come to japan to study and uh, how do you want to make use of your experience in japan uh in your life so uh, please uh, keep uh, keep thinking of considering of this thing. So because of uh, the uh, the Japanese uh, in uh, Japanese job hunting system, it's very complicated. So uh, so you are maybe you forget this this theme. So please keep in mind why uh, you you come to study in Japan and uh, what, uh, how do you want to make use of uh, the experience of in Japan? So thank you so much. Mm -hmm. um, yes, uh, thank you so much uh, for this expert advice. And I would like to advise from my own experience, like during your internship search or a job search in Japan, keep your motivation high 
don't lose hope if you are got rejected and for the internship don't apply for an internship just you have to do the internship try to apply the internship which may be related to your job field or that will going to help you for the uh, future job don't just apply for the internship because you have to do the internship so this is the key point and yeah keep your motivation high because that's the important part yep. um jojo i just want to say again uh, find help uh, i received help from uh, agents and from the university support center so they are there for you their job is to help you so use that so for me, I just want to end off with a different slide that I've used before. Um, you can see this, right? Um, this is something that I personally have uh, experienced, I have observed, and this I observed throughout my 10 years of living in Japan and looking at multiple um, multiple batches of uh, foreign students coming and going uh, in and graduating. Um, so we do see a really clear formula for people and their success rates in in uh, in Japan and it's really the more people that you know the more things that you have done bracket the better the chances I'm not going to give a quiz right now that's no time but the answer to this is outside school so my real recommendation to everybody is get out of school do things also outside of school Japan is more than just a school and these and those kind of experiences outside school can be what pushes you and your career and that includes internships so that's my little thing um and uh thanks again to everyone for joining us today i hope that this uh this session was uh was useful and uh and that hopefully this gave you some information that can help you in your job hunting um and your internship hunting as well so yeah thanks everyone for joining us today uh thank you all the speakers for your wonderful presentations and your responses as well very insightful and uh, we hope to do more of these uh in the future so please follow msa and uh our other uh efforts like so that we can actually help you help help us help you okay uh thanks so much everybody we're closing the session bye 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 thank bye. you for joining